Welcome to Kingdom Life Church and today's message with Drs. Dennis and Jennifer Clark brought to you by Full Stature Ministries and its dedicated supporters. We are here to equip you with the how-to tools and practical effective ways for empowering your Christian journey. Join us as we explore teachings that bring healing through forgiveness and ignite transformation in both individuals and families. For more resources, join our mission. Visit us at forgive123.com. Let's embark on this journey together. Jason and Gwen are going to share today, but I want to start out with something that I believe is important for Father's Day. Let me know when we go live. I can't see that clock. Welcome, Full Stature Ministries, Kingdom Life Church. Happy Father's Day. And uh, it's going to be, we're going to have fun this morning. I'm going to share some things that I think are important for Father's Day, besides just blessing fathers. Uh, And uh, Jason and Gwen will be sharing uh, as well afterwards here. Also, I want to let people know that uh, Jennifer just finished her booklet and CD series on the rebirth of Israel, although it's, no, the Jewishness of Jesus and the rebirth of Israel in booklet form. So if it was a little deep in the CD teaching, you can get the booklet and read it slow. <laughs> but uh, that's available now. It's on the website, isn't it, Jennifer? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, here's something I wanted to do on Father's Day. Uh, I was mindful of the fact that They say in prisons, on Mother's Day, cards go out like crazy. Father's Day, almost nothing. We have a fatherless society, one that has really failed to uh, come across with the kind of strength that God would want us to have as fathers. And when we traveled, we would do seminars. We saw really quality results. uh, Praying through father issues. You know, there's some people that can handle the name of Jesus, but the father they get a cringe in their gut that means they still need ministry because quite frankly uh, we have to identify with God as father and if if you get a cringy feeling just thinking because of unhealed wounds from earthly fathers it's going to limit it's going to put a distance between you and God the father and so I want to give you some tools today on father's day to close that gap. Wouldn't you like that? I mean, I had to do it in my life, and many people have to do it. And even if you had the most perfect father in the whole world, you still can't compare to God the Father. You still need to make that exchange, that you want your needs met by God the Father, and not be afraid of that word Father, because I, I we've run into it. Huh? People that were, oh, they're okay using the name Jesus, but Father? They had a hard time with. Well, our Father art in heaven. That's our Father. That's my Father and your Father. Abba, Father. So I want to give some tools. We can do it here in the room today. You can do it while you're watching on video. And uh, if you're alone, you can do this by yourself. But it would be great to just take some uh, pointers on how to do this and get with someone else and do it. Um, It's it's really interesting because it surfaces areas that you really need God to touch your heart in life. Um, We we called it, uh, what when we traveled and we were doing seminars, we called it Finding Father. (laughs) And so uh, I'm going to have everybody do this. And like I said, if you're watching by video, you can do this by yourself uh, and and just uh, follow the instructions. But it would be wonderful for a small group to get together and, and do this. And that is to pair up. And here, here's the way it goes. Have everyone pair off and take turns sharing about their early life. What was life like? For one minute, share with somebody. You can do it in the room right now. Share, what was it like growing up? Tell us about yourself. Oh, it's going to make you so vulnerable. You can do this in this room. You can do this at home. You can do it anywhere. Go ahead. Tell the person next to you, what was it like growing up? 
go sit over here by Jennifer and you tell her what it was like growing up. Jennifer, all right. We're just going to do this for a minute. But, you know, where did I, where did you go to school? Where did you work? Where did, where did you grow up? What state is, what state? It's not, this is not hard. Don't look puzzled. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to rush it a little bit, but you can do this for like a minute. That would be the rule of thumb, okay? But now, in one minute's time, and then you have to switch with two people. If you're doing this by yourself, obviously you have nobody to switch with, so you just do it right the first time. Tell it, what was it like growing up with father? For one minute, what was it like growing up with your father? Believe it or not, this is very important. It will surface things that you need to understand. What was it like growing up with father for one minute? And if you're watching by video for one minute and you're by yourself, just think about what it was like growing up with dad for one minute. And if you are with someone else, then you change, will exchange and go back and switch. This is this works beautiful in small groups. This is a Father's Day you won't forget. Okay, now you can switch if you haven't switched, but I'm going to go on and have a show of hands, and I can see you on the video, so I can see your hands wherever you're at. I see those hands, all right. On a scale of 1 to 10, your father, on a scale of how loved and safe did you feel? On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 meaning not very, 10 meaning above, well above average. How, how loved, actually it's really, you know, how secure you felt, how safe you felt. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 meaning not very safe or secure. 10 meaning very safe, very secure. Okay. Next question. On a scale of 1 to 10, how important or how significant did your father make you feel? How significant? How important did he make you feel? Okay, now once you have those numbers, you recognize that what we're going to do is, you know, when the scripture says honor your mother and father, that doesn't mean honor their bad behavior. That doesn't mean overlook it. It simply means forgive them. There's something powerful, something spiritually dynamic that takes place when you forgive from the heart. So any of the negative of what you needed and didn't receive, no matter what that unmet need was, God wants to meet your needs. I, he wants to meet your needs according to his riches and glory. We can read that, but we need to have it actually happen supernatural exchange and to purify the heart you need to release forgiveness first for all their shortcomings are you ready let's do that let's close your eyes wherever you're at and unless you're watching on video then i want you to watch me <laughs> but close your eyes and and get down to your spirit and when you picture 
any of those unmet needs, anything from your father, and you feel any hurt, fear, lust, anger, guilt, shame, any any toxic feeling, any yuck, any anything in the gut other than peace, you need to let Jesus, the forgiver who lives in you, go to it and through it until there's a flow out of your belly, flows rivers of loving forgiveness, loving waters, living water, loving water. It's a forgiveness that flows from the heart, and the and the, the yuck is gone. That's how you know there was a transaction. That's how you know you forgave from the heart. If it doesn't change to peace, you didn't do it from the heart. So this is not an intellectual function. This is something that you do from the heart. I release forgiveness for all that I needed and didn't receive, whatever that may be. You'll know in discussing what it was like growing up with Father. You know what unmet needs, that you, what you wished you could have had and didn't get. All right? And so you're releasing forgiveness for them not supplying that need. I'm releasing forgiveness to my Father for whatever. I forgive them for any traumas that I've experienced in my life as a result. I forgive them for that. And I receive forgiveness for taking in, taking in the, the fear, the hurt. I, my responsibility now is to receive forgiveness for taking in the yuck. So I forgive them. I'm honoring my mother and father, actually your father, or specifically, you can do this with mothers as well. But on Father's Day, I just felt it was really important that we bridge that gap and have our needs met righteously by God the Father. We've got to remove any hindrances, any walls, any judgments that would stand in the way. So, Father, we release that loving forgiveness to them. We release them of any demand or expectation to give. I've seen people where their mother and father have already gone to be with the Lord or what have you, and, and they're still demanding. That's unhealthy. You want to transfer those demands to God. But to transfer those demands, to have God meet those needs, you've got to clear the slate. You've got to release the forgiveness to whosoever. So, Father, we release that forgiveness to whosoever. We forgive our fathers for any unmet needs. And now I receive forgiveness for my failures and shortcomings. I receive forgiveness that because of those hurts and wounds, I've done the same thing. I receive forgiveness for having harbored that and even practiced some of those same things myself. I forgive and receive forgiveness. But now, God, I'm asking you, my Father, who meets all of my need according to his riches and glory, I am welcoming God's presence to come right now into the tablet of my heart. And you meet my need righteously. You meet that need. All that I needed and didn't receive, I'm receiving it right now. All that I needed and didn't receive, I receive it right now. Father, thank you. Write it on the tablet of my heart. Thank you, Lord. See, all I knew in my, maybe you can identify with some of this, but uh, I knew rejection only from my father. The day came when I learned that I released forgiveness to him for all the rejection. He was rejected himself. He couldn't give something he never got. I released forgiveness to him, and I got acceptance from God. All of a sudden, I am accepted in the beloved. He says, Dennis, I'm giving you my undivided attention. My thoughts are continually to all of a sudden the gap was filled. I want God to fill the gap in you. I want him to fill it righteously and get those needs met righteously. But we're removing any walls or barriers or judgments that would prevent us from getting it from God. You can't receive something if you won't make room for it. So, Father, we're making room for God the Father today here on Father's Day. We're making room for you to meet our need righteously. For my God will supply all, all of my need according to his riches and glory. And, Father, my part is to release demands and expectations. You know, the beauty of this was 
the day came when I was a young pastor and I preached this similar message and thank God that I had released forgiveness to my dad and everything because he came and answered an altar call with tears flowing down. He had never heard an affirming word through a male voice his entire life. But there I was able to give in the spirit something that he never got. Some people live their whole life demanding that they give me what I deserve. And that will get you nowhere except pain and more pain. So, Father, right now, we release the demands and that we honor our mother and father, not by their behavior. We honor them because it's the loving thing to do is forgiving them, forgiving them and letting loving forgiveness flow out to them. We are resting assured that we've cleaned the slate and we've obeyed God. And now my God shall supply all of my need, all of those unmet needs. And you ought to write them down, those unmet needs, and let God minister to them righteously. He is the I am. He is that I am, that I am that can minister to all of those needs. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you if there's security, importance. I'm the apple of your eye. I'm accepted in the beloved. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon me, that I should be called a child of God. This is the Father's Day. and before you can be a father unto sons, you have to first be a son unto the father. And that's what we're doing here this morning. You've got to be a son to the father because just like it says in 1 John, I speak to you little children, I speak to you young men, and I speak to you fathers. That was not chronological age. That had to do with the maturing age. And God wants you to mature and to be mature mothers and fathers in the Lord. And to mature into that, you have to be a son or a daughter first before you can be a father or a mother to others. You want to be healthy and grow up and be strong. Then release forgiveness to whosoever and whatever they did, whatever they didn't do that you thought they should, whatever they did and shouldn't have. It, it makes absolutely no difference for forgiveness cleanses a slate. And we thank you for this now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You should practice this. Husband and wife, practice this in small groups, practice it. And you'd be surprised how God will meet your need according to his riches once you clean the heart. Amen? Amen. Okay, Jennifer and Gwen will be coming up. Who did I say? Jennifer and Gwen? Well, maybe that's prophetic. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of... but these, are, these are her glasses up here, so I'm sure it's, it's Gwen. Good morning, everyone. Happy Father's Day. I think what the, what the Lord's been speaking, and we wanted to share about um, the last few weeks, that the Lord's been speaking to us, even um, personally, about sonship and the scripture that most of what this is going to come out from is, is John 17, John chapter 17, where it says, Father, I desire that they also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory that you have given me because you love me before the foundation of the world. <laughs> John 17, that chapter often is referred to as the high priestly prayer. It's like peeking into Jesus' heart of hearts for us and, and for the disciples. It reveals his deepest desires for our relationship with him and with the Father. And as we explore this chapter, I wanted to share some personal stuff that we've been going through and, and a story or two that <laughs> has led to this, this uh, 
some of the revelation. But when <clears throat> when he says that uh, to see my glory and that, that you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world, there's what I what I learned in studying this is that there was three. There was three glories really: the glory of of him of Jesus prior to his incarnation, which is the pre-incarnate glory. There's the incarnate glory, of course, when he was made flesh and walked among us, right? And then there's the trans-incarnate glory, and that's where I, I felt like really the, the most prominent importance of in, in, the, in the revelation of what um, God was speaking to us. Glory... And, 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 you know, you hear about it a lot and people preach the glory, the glory, the glory and 10 different types of glory and this and that. And I was always kind of like, OK, glory. <laughs> I don't I don't have the full revelation to stop cramming it down my throat <laughs> and, and not to be rude or anything, you know, but but I was like, what is it? What is it? It's it's really all it is, is the manifestation of of God's um, uh, his nature. Right. Mm -hmm. The, the, the fruit of the spirit and, and, and like all the names of God. And if you do your, you know, you do your research. In fact, I found a new one today that is Elroy. And I thought that was really funny that God's name was Elroy, but it's L R O I, which is the God who sees me. And, and I, I thought that was pretty neat. You learn something new every day, right? All of it is school. Um, but it says, father, I desire, that they also whom you have given me to be with me where I am, to see my glory and that you've given me because you loved me before the foundations of the world. That's John 17. Um, you know, the scripture where it says we, we have, um, behold what men are loved that, 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 that God has bestowed upon us, that we would be called the child of God, that we would be called the children of God. And it's one of those things where it's not just where, I know it's Father's Day and we're, we're looking at the fathers, but it's like in order to, to be honoring to the Father, it's like our Father God is to, to really be able to express the His Son mm -hmm. through us, I think is one of the main goals and one of the things that the Lord's been teaching us um, on a personal level um, is that we are to be not just sitting and, and doing the 60 day challenge as if it's something that's just for us to get healed. And, and all of that is great to get healed and to get become whole, you know, in, in Christ is, is great. But the 60 day challenge is not about just getting healed and hold whole just for ourselves. Right. There isn't anything that God's given that isn't for others. All the gifts, of the spirit none of them are for us they're for everybody else our gifts that he's given us are for others the fruit of the spirit you know how we've we've explained the fruit of the spirit is the an expression it's god's expression it's his nature mm -hmm. that results from abiding which is learning how to do the, like the 60-day challenge and pray through things is learning how to abide to grow fruit to be fruit bearers, right? The fruit is not for the vine, is it? It's the glory of the vine, right? And then, then you have another glory of what happens with the fruit. Which is for others. Which is for others. It's kind of like, I think my dad mentioned yesterday was like the, the glory of a lemon is lemonade. <laughs> the glory of a toaster is toast it's it's when you it's when you take the the fruit of the vine it's the the um the result of abiding and and process it internally and express it as a son or daughter of the most high jesus coming out of us that is the glory that he's talking about the that that part is so important right now <laughs> sorry <laughs> we're here sorry. for a purpose and whether or not we're even called to be married we're called unto god but we're not called to sit in a closet with god 
we are this church is very mature in the, the knowledge and the practice of abiding but there's what we are realizing this week is that whole other level of taking that abiding coming out of that secret place but not leaving the abiding so that what flows from the Father through us is for others. You don't have to be married to do that. You don't have to be have a platform to do that. It's, it's in our everyday walk and in our, it's bearing the fruit of Christ, which is for others. It's not just for ourselves. Um, and we've just been experiencing that to a whole other level this week that we want to invite you guys to. Yeah, um, and I think a lot of us are even experiencing that further because it's like um, we know that we do on Tuesday nights, we we are learning how to be in one accord, right? It's different than just coming together, being in a group. And we talked about that a little bit this morning. It's it's a lot different. It's a, it's with the same heart and mindset and, and love for each other and the Lord that produces the you know, the, 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 the fruit of it, right? Mm -hmm. um, the oneness. And just like uh, Tom's scripture in Acts chapter 5, it's because they were in a, one accord that the things of God transpired the way that he wanted them to be walked out. And that's the way that when we look at abiding, it's learning his will, and that it's not just something that we do good, that it's actually something that we are doing that is in God's will because you can do good you can be religious you can have all this you know all the training and stuff and work it out in the flesh but what we what we're learning is that deeper abiding in his love for us um, allowing it to transform us first but then allowing you know that abiding to show us the way show us what we're to do show us who we're to minister to show us what our time would be the most effective in ministering mm -hmm. you know um well it's like i i took our book club through the good or god series and it's just it's so eye-opening i mean you you know the scripture depart from me i never knew you but to know that everything that we see the concept of I see a need, I should meet it, is different than I see a need, Father, am I, do I have a part to play in this? If I do, tell me what it is. What do I say? What do I look like? Where do I go? How much do I provide? It, it's not a, a one-size-fits-all when you see a need. Sometimes you're not to do anything. Sometimes God wants to be there for that person through what right. needs to be met. Sometimes he already has the provision made and it's coming from somebody else. So you never know what it's gonna look like, but it, it takes intentionality, it takes connection with the Lord to know what is your part and to be able to walk it out fully in obedience because the greatest form of worship unto the Lord is obedience. There's a, there's a, um, a really I guess it's kind of like a heaviness comes off of you when you know that you are doing the right thing at the right time with the, the you know, not just good intentions, but with God, by God's will. Mm -hmm. And that you're being obedient to him as opposed to just trying to meet a need, you know, in the flesh. Because people, there's a lot of people like us that, that, that want to, meet everybody's needs. I don't want anybody to be hurting and, and lonely or, you or know, or, or broke down on the side of the road or lacking of any kind. Um, but there, there has to be a, a, a drawing of the spirit in the direction that, that he wants us to go. Um, well, the, the, the lightness and the lifting is because he's doing it through us when it's being done through his will. Yeah. And, by his power. When we're doing it on our own and on our own strength, that goes against him and it's actually walking in disobedience. Yeah. And it's not all easy all the time though. No. I mean, it is at, at some points, just like what we had with the, with the neighbor across the street, 
it was during a period of time, well, you can tell the story, but it was like a time that you didn't really need to put that effort out if you had the choice, right? <laughs> no, Jason was leaving for pastor's meeting on Sunday and he pulled out and he saw the neighbor across the street was digging up all of her old shrubs and planting new ones. And she's, they're young, they're a newlywed couple and her husband was away on a trip and she was out there trying to get it done and she was he texted me and he's like would you maybe want to go help the neighbor she's reminding me of you right now so this might be something that you could tackle and <laughs> I looked out the window and I had just got you know I had my Sunday clothes off I was so comfortable relaxed I wasn't exactly dressed to be out in public but I was just comfortable finally I was very tired and it was a very very trying day with the kids and I was just like Yes, I can do this. But the thing is, is as I walked it out, I was very quickly to realize I wasn't there to do it for her. I was there to fellowship with her. And we got to know each other at a whole other level that we've not known each other. We talked about the Lord. We shared about God in marriage. We shared about what friendship looks like that is you know godly friendship versus just i profess to be a christian but i'm not really walking it out you know because she's seen the difference um in some of their friendships and it yes i helped her get all of her plants sh and shrubs um buried and and, and uh, landscaping done but that wasn't the purpose i wasn't there to save her or rescue her or do it for her but God had me speak into her life. Um, but if I wasn't in the right heart attitude, or if I had just been on a mission to just do it for her and get it done, um, I wouldn't have served his purpose in that. So. Jesus' glory is anchored in the eternal love of the Father, a love that existed before the foundation of the world. This love precedes all history, all fallenness, and it's this love that Jesus desires for us to not only experience, but to present to the world. One of the things I read that I thought was interesting, too, is, is righteousness in light of relationship instead of righteousness in light of doing what's right and wrong, or being right even, um, doing right, right, doing right and wrong. That righteousness isn't merely a, a moral um, behavior, but it's fundamentally about right relationships. As seen in Abraham's faith, righteousness was trusting and believing in God's character and nature. It's like saying, hey God, I trust you completely, and then you live like it. There's a difference, like what she was talking about, our neighbor had brought up, um, that she has lots of Christian friends, whatever, and then she says, whatever that means to them. I was like, whoa, and that's not uncommon. I mean, there's a lot of people that profess to believe with their mouth, but what their hearts are far from him because the relationship's not there. And anybody can say, hey, I, I was born again. I'm a Christian. I believe that, you know, I believe in God. But the, the weight of the, the reality of, of, you know, a true Christian life, uh, you know, if it's not there, the, the willingness to be transformed by the love of God, to experience that relationship, to then, you know, walk it out in front of people. If you're living like the world, yeah, they're going to say the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever that means to them, I'm not sure, because I don't see any difference or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. um, we don't want to be like that. <laughs> we want to have what, what true Christianity is, right? True Christianity. In fact, I want to, I, I have that somewhere. In my notes, first I, I wanted to share with you a dream that I had that was kind of brought it all. But, but the essence of true Christianity is not just about having to follow rules and traditions. Like a lot of people just think Christianity is, 
you got to do this and you can't do that. And, and your life is no fun anymore. <laughs> no, it's, it's not about that. It's about entering into a profound realization of who we are. Really who we are. Sons and daughters of a loving, awesome God. The creator. Where we know and are known by him. That we know him. You know, there's, there's a portion of scripture where, where, Jesus, where Jesus actually says, I know you, God. I know you, Father. And I want them to know you this way, is basically what he prayed in, in John 17. I know you. What is it? That's like the most awesome thing about sonship is the, the ability to have that um, awareness of of the Father and, and knowing who He is and the confidence of this is my Father mm-hmm. and He loves me. <clears throat> I had a dream this past week that revealed some things in me that um, that I struggled with for a long period of time. And I felt like the, this is one of those things where, you know, where, where, where God is taking the church, it's like the, the he, he was, we were talking about the, the begin again again, which is like the third new beginning of, of Kingdom Life Church. And not to make light of it at all, what it is, it's, 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 it's really cool because we have, we have learned not just to be the, the, you know, the child that is gimme, gimme, fix me, do this for me, provide to the young man who has overcome. We've learned the, 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 we have the tools that we can overcome in, in, with Christ. But we're moving towards that third level, which is the expression of the Father himself through us, through Christ in us, that, we ta- that he talks about in there, that I'm in him and he, he's in you and I'm in, and he's in me. And I want all of that, you know, is, is what Jesus was saying. I want that for them, that relationship, that being able to express. And part of it is the working out and following the Lord's will in our personal lives and letting him guide us to certain people to talk to at work, at school, at, you know, um, in your neighborhood. Um, you know, but one of the th- one of the things that I had that was dampening my ability was um, a false personality or a lie that I believed that I am unadic- I'm, 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 I'm just not adequate. I don't have what it takes to express everything the way that God wants me to. I'm an introvert. I'm this and that, and I know that some of that stuff is is true based on experience and what have you right but the but the lord gave me this dream and i had it and it was about uh, a friend of mine in the dream that i had been trying to help and she expressed some concerns to me that i could not help with i was completely out of my element i was completely inadequate in just about every way that she, she I, I felt wow this is terrible i can't help you you but would, I attempted to. I, I empathized, but was no help. Because in the dream, I didn't bring God into the picture at all. I was trying to do everything in my flesh. I saw the need. I went, wow, I can't meet that need. <laughs> but you could tell me about it if you want to. <laughs> and but but there was like a couple different scenarios, and I can't really go into you know a lot of detail, but there's the scenarios in the dream made me um, realize that I was facing I was facing my own ina- inadequacy. I was facing my own um, I'm out of my element type. You know, I, I can't do it. I'm out of my element. It's not for me. I don't feel comfortable. I don't even know where to start. You know, all of those <laughs> lies that that cause you know insecurities insecurities that came with it. Um, God wanted me to deal with. When I woke up, I was like, "Wow." So, what do you do? What do you do when you know that, Lord? You say, "Hey, where where did this come in?" And he's he starts bringing you back into childhood, and you're like, "Wow," you know what. 
what that means, it's a root. It's a root issue. It means that it developed over time. There may be some lies attached. There was something to it, right? So when I asked him when did this start, he gave me the recollection of a story of when, when I was young, I had a lot of spiritual stuff happen to me. I had a, um, I was very open to spirit realm in, in, the, in, not, in, a, in a great way. And I was tormented. Um, I experienced several supernatural encounters that shaped my understanding, you know, of, of God and the devil. Um, and this was just like right after kindergarten. I was like first, second, third grade. Um, it wasn't just, you know, it wasn't just growing pains. It was, it was learning the supernatural. Um, it was like my own little class learning in the supernatural, seeing the supernatural 101, right? Um, I used to get dizzy spells and fall over for no reason, just sitting in class. Like they would have me operating the, the projector doing a movie time. We were doing history class or whatever. And I would just all of a sudden be on the floor. Well, it gradually went worse and worse until um, I started hearing voices and the voices weren't very nice. And usually they kicked off with some type of white noise, whether it was the TV white noise screen or a vacuum cleaner playing, you know, vacuuming or uh, running water was a big deal. And then all of a sudden I would start hearing voices. And so I was like, it was like really schizophrenic like uh, stuff that you would could, could classify um, some of the actual things that had happened could be categorized as a schizophrenic experience um, but the but the voices of what got me is they were never nice they were always horrible and I never watched horror movies or things like that growing up I was very protected I was very safe in those environments so I didn't really know too much garbage at that time, especially that young. But it was like things, I would hear my name over and over and over, Jason, 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 all these different voices. And they would tell them, hate your parents. Your parents are lying to you. You know, all of these things would be, I would be hearing these things, like audibly almost. Well, at least I thought so. And um, Everything's a lie. You can't believe anything. You can't believe your parents. You got to hate your parents. And so all this negative garbage. Like who would have brought that? I, so those of you who, who are, are skeptical of uh, evil or, you know, demonic forces or what have you, um, I'm not praising them in any way. I'm not trying to build that platform at all. But they, 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 there's too many things that have, I've had experience to deny the existence of, of that kind of stuff, right? Um, not that I ever would, because I know God. He knows me, which is really awesome. <laughs> but, you know, and even with our own, our own children, we've had experiences that are undeniable. That, you know, you know, but what had happened was is that I had a, a, a recurring I had night terrors as well during that time. And the only thing that I could really keep those voices away was I'd listen to praise and worship music to get me to be able to sleep because I needed to get the attention off of the sounds of the voices and things. And so I'd play worship music and this and that, but, but then they would attack me in my dream, in my sleeps. And so I'd have these night terrors, I think these big Sasquatch creature, uh, you know, chasing me. And... I would be over and over every night, every night, and I'd wake up terrified. And one night, I was like, you know, I'm a, I'm a Christian. I, sh I have authority. I was born again when I was five, and now I'm seven. I can do this. <laughs> and so even in the dream, I stood up to this creature. And it's not like it's an abnormal dream for kids to have, being, being chased through the woods by this, you know, Sasquatch or anything. But it happens. But I went, and I particularly, in this particular mode of thinking before I went to bed, I woke up and I said, I didn't wake up. I mean, in the dream, I, I turned around while this thing was chasing me. I said, I'm done with this. I'm tired of being run in the, in, around in the dream. And, I'm, and I turned around and I faced this creature. And of course, in the dream, it was like way up there. 
looking down at me, snarling with his nasty, ugly, demonic face. And I woke up screaming. <laughs> and so I was like, wow, I'm not sure if that did anything, but I'm gonna, I'm, I drew a picture. And I, and, and I was pretty good even at that age, at, you know, in art. And I, so I sketched it out uh, and, I, and I stuck it in my little desk that I, I had um, gotten from my parents that I, could, I was using for, for school and for drawing and things. And I stuck it inside the top of the, uh, the, the desk and I left it there and I went to school. And while I was at school, my dad happened to come across that picture in my desk and was like, whoa, it's time for some some you know divine intervention here and he prayed and 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 c commanded it to go and it left he saw it actually take off and it wasn't no bigger than a monkey you know in my dream of course he was like sasquatch bigfoot and and it took off and it went right through the front door because you know they're polite when when they're it's time for them to go <laughs> They went, it went physically right through the front door, not physically, whatever you call it. It was spirit. Went through the front door anyway. Which we always thought that was curious and funny that he used the front door. But at that time, it was like I felt completely helpless and hopeless. And I was seeing things on a daily basis, even with my eyes open. I would, I would see demonic things on like the stairway while I was going to youth group. They would be sitting there at like... You know, and they would stare at me, and I would command them to go, and they would just turn and go. Because I didn't realize that the fear and the unbelief that I had in me was allowing them to have an anchor. You know, allowing them to have a foothold. So anytime I used the Word of God and did what I should do and yelled and screamed at the top of my lungs, they never went anywhere. They just mocked me. And I felt so inadequate. In, in the in, in, in so young and so immature and so that I would I just stuffed it and was like well I guess there's more I got to learn or there's some better way or something and so I just was like I'm not I'm not going to try to pay attention to any of this stuff anymore and then the things would pop up here and there and I would just let them be in my life because I didn't know how to get rid of that stuff. Um, until, of course, that day when Dad found that picture and prayed it out the front door and all of his buddies apparently left as well because everything immediately stopped from that point on. No more voices, no more dizzy spells, no more anything. It all stopped. And so, and I wasn't even aware of it. It wasn't something that he came and prayed with me about. It was something that the Father in his love for his son, did for me on my behalf because of my inadequacy. Is that, <laughs> is that not a picture of the Father God? But now this week, God's putting his finger back on it because there's another level of going to the root of the fear and the the, the judgment on myself right. that I was inadequate, that I am inadequate, that I can't do it all. I can't do. It's true, but it but but it's true. We none of us, all of us are apart born inadequate. From God, it's apart true. from God, it's right. true. But what He wants me to, and you to realize this morning is that He is with us. He is with us, that He always was. The only thing that stopped me from being able to being able to do this on my own was that I didn't realize that he was with me, that I was alone. I thought I was alone. And do you know how, how alone it feels when you're growing up and you see these things and you hear those things and your friends aren't doing that? <laughs> There's not one person that's ever talked to me that I had a friend, friendly relationship with that has ever experienced any of those things. Not like I did. And I didn't want to be that special. <laughs> I just wanted it to be gone. <laughs> and I felt alone. I felt separated and alone. But the first thing, like, <laughs> it's really fresh, I'm sorry. But the first thing that God told me 
when I'm praying through this is that he, he is with me. And he is my sufficiency. And not only am I adequate through him, but I'm an overcomer through him. When you look at how God, and I was talking to my dad a little bit this morning, at how amazing his nature is, because we were talking about what a real sons and daughters look like, what real Christians look like to people. And it's the Father's nature through coming out. Mm -hmm. His, that's the glory of Jesus coming out. The nature, the fruit of the Spirit coming out. And one of those, you know, one of the things that, that he's been showing us is that to interact with others with that nature is just like, you know, from the beginning of when we were talking about our, our you know, our um, identity in Christ was it began with the welcoming aspect of Jesus. What was that welcoming aspect that, that drew all men? Even if it was it was like the worst of the worst characters, but they were drawn to him, to sit with him, you know, and, and to learn from him. And mm -hmm. and and I'm and I'm just I'm just so humbled <laughs> and wrecked. Because God never keeps us where we where we were found. He He never lets us stay. He loves us so much that He doesn't let us stay where He found us. That He He develops in us and wants us to grow from the child to young man to the father, but as an expression of Him through us. He wants us to continue growing, and, and I think that's where He's bringing prophetically where He's bringing the church. Um, is the, the, the third new beginning for, for Kingdom Life Church and the people here is that we become expressions of the Father through Christ in us. It's, it's one of those things that just, just being a pastor and having a pastoral heart, I, I see the, the scripture where, where Paul writes that Christ be formed in you that he is travailing, that Christ be formed in you. It's like, that should be every pastor's heart for this people. You know, it's the, the, the things that, that I deal with that are painful. But I do it for you guys. Because I want to see Christ not just in me, fixing me, but I want it to be... And not just in me, but I want it to help everybody. <laughs> you know, so I understand Paul's feeling mm -hmm. where it's like, I travail, I, I travail, I feel like I'm, I'm you know, giving birth to a child <laughs> or that I'm right there. This is, there's birthing pangs. Can't, can't experience that myself, but you know, she has. But it's the, the it's that pain of dealing with. It's not me suffering, you know that I that I you know I'm taking one for the team so to speak. I I want to deal with all of those things that Jesus puts his fingers on, or that the Holy Spirit says here. I need you to deal with this inadequacy issue. <laughs> I'm not just doing it for me. It's not about us. And, and I think that that's really where he's moving all of our, our perspectives more and more is outwardly. It's an outward movement. Well, and any area that's not been dealt with is, an area, is something that's coming between you and God. And that's an area of your life that won't produce fruit. This is the challenge. This is the challenge is that anywhere, any area of your life that you, can, you come across, 
that you aren't experiencing the fruit of the Spirit, there's a problem. There's a, there's a, there's what's called the soul. <laughs> there's a soul problem. <laughs> there's a mind and will and emotions issue. <laughs> if you don't, if you are not adequately experiencing the fruit of the Spirit in any area, you know, we say, you know, you know, don't let anything come between what you and I have. That's what my dad's experience was, is, you know, and how the Lord's taught him. Mm-hmm. But in the same way, this is the same way. If there is an area that I'm not experiencing love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, if there's any areas that you're lacking in one of those, that's not expressing one of those fruits, there's, there's something that the Lord wants you to look at. It's not fully surrendered to Him and His will, right? I want, while we're looking at sonship, one of the things that we were talking about is like helping your neighbors, this and that. Build relationships. Just go talk to people. Be spirit-led. Ask the Lord every morning if there's somebody that I can, that, that I can bless with. Today, is there somebody that you want me to touch, that that that, that you could use me to, right. you know, and just follow His will? It doesn't hurt nothing, right? And I think it's really important right now when people are are just prone to see, oh, there's a bunch of Christians, whatever that means. That really hit home, whatever that means, you know. And you gave her a good example. I mean, a good description that probably blew her 10, ten pages away <laughs> was that being a, being a Christian is being submitted to the, per, the, the one who saves you yeah. and delivers you and being completely submitted to them. She was like, wow. Well, and even being <laughs> newly married, she was like, they don't understand. You can't do this marriage thing without God. (laughs) And I was like, no, 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 (laughs) not without learning a forgiveness lifestyle, not without learning and living and walking in peace and allowing the fruit of the spirit to, to really permeate the house. You really will have a hard time in marriage. (laughs) Um, But we were talking about like purposely getting up in the morning and asking God, Things like, what would you have me do today, Lord? Where would you have me go today? Um, is there somebody that you would have me bless today? Being Having more of an intentional heart attitude about things that are not just about you. Because you're here so that he can work through you. And God's even doing that with me this week without me being intentional about it, but it's bringing my attention to it in the moments. Like Tuesday night, he came home from church. I was in the middle of putting the kids to bed and I realized, public sales end tonight. I forgot to go to the (laughs) store. I was like, finish finish doing bedtime. I got to get dressed. I have to go to the store now. So at nine o'clock at night, I'm going and getting groceries and I see a mom with a little one in a cart in a pitch black parking lot. I had already put my cart, my groceries away. I had already put my cart away. I was getting in my car and I was like, this is why I'm here. I went and I helped her and then I offered to return her cart for her so she didn't have to leave her kid in the car in order to return the cart and in order to return the cart and it was pitch black out. And I, but I was, I was like immediately I knew, I was like, that's why I was here at 9 o'clock at night, was for that. I, I didn't ask the Lord, am I supposed to go to the grocery store right now? But I was like, but my spirit was aware in the moment that he was using me for his purpose, and that was why I was there. I took the kids to VBS this week, and the one night I really didn't want to go. And I was like, Jason, is it okay if I just drop the kids off and go have some girl time with Charlene? 
And I was just like, I'm so tired and I just would really like to go. She's going to be gone for a couple weeks on a trip and I'm going to miss her. And he was like, no, I feel like you're supposed to be with the kids. And so I went and somebody walked up to me and said, we're not friends, but I follow you because of what you post on social media. And I really like what you post. And so I follow you. I really like you. And I just felt like I was supposed to hug her, and I hugged her, and I could feel the pain that she was carrying. And I was like, this is why I was here tonight. It's not for the kids. But I was here for whatever door might be open there um, with that woman. So there's two different, there's a way of being intentional, asking the Lord, where would you have me go today? Is there somebody you'd have me bless? But then there's also that, just yielding your spirit to the Lord to another degree so that you are aware in those moments that this was a God moment, this was a God moment, and just exercising your spirit to be strengthened to hearing him and knowing his voice, his leading, his nature, um, touching spirit to spirit with somebody else and having those God moments. It's, it takes intentionality to go there. And that's what we're learning. And, and sonship is basically what he's, he's mm -hmm. telling us to do. Living in the reality of sonship means living in a, a life of purpose. It's about recognizing that you've been uniquely called and equipped to reflect God's glory in your own way. Whether it's through your work or relationships or your service to others, you have a role to play in God's story for you. As you grow in understanding of God's love for you, let that love flow out to others. A heart of compassion is one of the hallmarks of true sonship. Look for ways to serve, encourage, and uplift those around you. Remember that same love that the Father has for Jesus is the love that he has for you and them. And it's meant to be shared. Finally, living as a child of God gives us an internal perspective. The eternal perspective is that we are part of a bigger picture one that extends beyond the here and now. And this doesn't mean that we ignore our challenges in this life, but we face them with the assurance that there is more to come and that He is with us. Amen. Thank you for joining us. You've been listening to Drs. Dennis Clark and Jennifer Clark from Full Stature Ministries. To explore more life-transforming resources and deepen your faith journey, please visit us at forgive123.com and our online school at teamembassy.com. All rights reserved under applicable law. For details, please see our copyright policy on our website. Again, that's forgive123.com.